Mastara has always had the strength of great writers behind it. It's one of the recognized elements for its long life and popularity. So, the author of The Five Shires might surprise you as he's better known for writing another, lesser setting. When you look over the list of authors, the one that sticks out as an oddity is Ed Greenwood. Yes, the Forgotten Realms guy. He wrote the book on Mastara Halflings, and say what you will about his writing habits, he does write a good source book. I'm Mr. Welch, and today we're going to see if Mastara has gotten the short end of the stick. Published in 1988, Five Shires was one of Greenwood's first solo projects, his only other one prior to being Waterdeep in the North. Cover is called well, that goes without saying. Greenwood wanted to make the halflings unique in his book, so the first thing he did was give them a name change. They were now called the Hen in their own language. Halfling was a name given to them by outsiders. He actually carried this bit of lore over to the Forgotten Realms, and which I don't count that as borging it like they did with so many of our creatures and features, because Ed just used the name in both worlds. He turned away from the Hobbit clones that halflings were largely known for. The Hen weren't a pastoral type. They were survivors with a bloody past and a take-no-prisoners attitude. The origins of the Hen are left unexplained. They just showed up in the Shires, coming from a distant land by ship, and settled down in 1300 BC. Unlike the Dwarves or the Elves, there are no various types of Hen. They're all just Hen. All halflings are Hen. There's no variations. This is actually important to their story, as they are a single unified people no matter where you find them. They keep to their ancient customs, and they take them wherever they settle down. The Hen on arrival made friends with a nearby elf tribe that the Hen called the Masters, or the Gentlefolk, because of their harmony with nature. The two races were close for centuries, until the pacifistic Gentlefolk suddenly disappeared without a trace. The Hen never found out what happened to their friends, but the elves were cursed to live without a self-preservation instinct, and were rapidly becoming extinct due to attacks by various humanoids. So they ended up in the Hollow World. With the elves gone, the Hen were conquered for the first time by an orc warlord known as Othrong. He invaded the Hen lands with a massive army, enslaved the entire race for over three decades. His son Rorg took the throne after Othrong's death from overindulgence, and he was an even crueler warlord. Finally, after decades of slavery, the Hen rose up and killed the tyrant before driving the orcs out. Then they created the first of their homelands, Hendon. It would only last for 26 years. Hendon was prosperous, but poorly defended. In the end, the orc king Gower sacked the Hinden capital, burning it to the ground. Then a faction of orcs, humans, and dwarves fought over the remains of the nation to see who would rule the small folk. After years of constant fighting, the dwarf Loctal Ironshield was the last warlord standing. He was deposed 20 years later after fighting a difficult humanoid incursion, and after the campaign was over, the Hen rose up and the dwarf found out he didn't have enough troops to hold the land. So he took his remaining forces north, deciding not to march against the Hen when they had numbers and were fully equipped. He gave up the throne and returned to Rockholm. The Hen created a new kingdom on the remains of the old Hendon. Sheridan was founded in 912 BC and lasts over a hundred years. The Hen again prospered, though the loosely organized government caused strife as the various families bickered and argued over control of the government. Eventually, Hen turned on Hen because of the fragmented nature of Sheridan. During this time, numerous Hen fled the nation to new lands where their descendants still reside. Various families became extinct in the Civil War as the clans fought for control over the nation, smaller families merged into larger clans for protection, and larger clans openly fought on the streets. Only a harsh winter ended the clan strife, though the damage was already done. Even more Hen fled their homeland, leaving it in a weakened state, leading to the third conquest of the Hen homeland, this time by the orc warlord Thrail. He proved to be an especially cruel yet effective ruler. He created a stable government for the orcs, while working the Hen to death to provide for their overlords. Under him, the orcs thrived, creating the greatest kingdom the orcs have ever had. Thrail ruled for 20 years before disease took him, causing the orcs to fight amongst each other until a new ruler was chosen. This time around, it was General Goch, considered needlessly sadistic even by orcs. He expanded the orc kingdom's territory, all the while using the Hens as slaves, fodder, and even food. He was already old when he assumed the throne, and while he was popular, he developed a severe allergy to the poison his successor was feeding him. Ferg Orr realized the orcs were depopulating the hen, and without them the orcs would be without slaves. He forced the hen into a breeding program to restore their numbers. While a tyrant, the hen managed to flourish under him because of his protective ways, though that was for his own selfish reasons. Ferg Orr ruled for a full twenty years before he was accidentally killed when a rival's warband mistook their king for an archery target. Before a new orc king could be named, the Hen decided they'd had enough. For years under Ferg Orr, the Hen had been hiding away what they could, especially their children. They prepared their revolution in secret, and in the process of building up their numbers and their arms, they became very good at not being seen. With the death of the orc king, the orc strife began in 747 BC. 
Hen began a brutal guerrilla war against the orcs, who were still fighting with each other to determine the new king. The orcs never realized that the orc strife had even begun. Any dead orcs were assumed to be slain by other orcs. Hen employed hit-and-run tactics against the orc warbands, until the humanoids numbered barely a few hundred. Then human and null warbands invaded, eager to conquer the orcs and take the land for themselves. It was then the high heroes emerged, Nobnar, Brinderhorn, and Cobberham Shadowglint. These hen helped drive off the orcs, and when they were replaced by human and null invaders, they kept up the hit-and-run tactics until the invaders had expended their strength and were forced to retreat. The hen were free once again. The hen gathered once more to create a new government. They didn't trust a single leader to rule over them. That had caused the clan strife. A government by the various clans was also rejected, because those hen would be loyal first to their own kin and then to the nation. A compromise was reached, where the nation was divided up into shires, each one represented by a sheriff, and these sheriffs would make decisions for the nation as a whole, while the clan leaders would handle local issues. A hen named Gunzith served as the first and last lone sheriff of the hen. He organized the government and established the shires. On his deathbed, he dissolved the nation of Sheridan, and the five shires were born in 572 BC. The Shires since then have faced numerous attempts at conquest, repelling all invaders one after another. They did attempt their own hand at colonization by sending settlers to the Irindi Islands in 575 AC, but that colony only lasted barely more than a decade before the Thiatian Empire conquered it and sent the Hen there back to the Shires. The Hen gave up their claim on the islands, knowing that the Empire was more than a match for their small army. Since then, they've kept to themselves, and they have prospered. They've made friends with all their surrounding nations, with the exception of the Black Eagle, Baron, and Karamikos, who views them as future vassals. They also have problems with the Wizards of Glantry, who sneak across the Shire's border with Derrickin to attempt to kidnap him to take them back for experimentation. For this reason, Glantrians, even non-magic-using ones, can always expect a chilly reception in the Shires. One feature that makes the Hen so feared in combat is the Yalaran, which is an overwhelming desire to go adventuring during the late teen years. Older Hen are known for being staunch traditionalists who don't like anything that would disrupt the status quo. But all Hen have undergone the Yalaran, which means almost every adult Hen has adventurer levels. One of the dangers of trying to cause trouble in the Shires is that even the farmers are skilled at arms. Bandits that think of them as children because of their size will find that to be a fatal underestimation as the hen are often better at fighting than they are. Hen are typically fighters, though rogues and clerical hen aren't unheard of. Hen wizards aren't impossible, but they're so rare as to be considered legendary. Hen might lose their adventuring streak as they mature, but they don't lose the lessons or the treasures they earn during their Yalaran. The hen are fiercely protective of the Shires. They've bled for their homeland too many times, and they have sworn to never lose it again. The land seems to reciprocate their dedication to it, with a special ability called Denial. This ability manifests in all adult hen in the Shire, allowing them a chance to disrupt hostile magic, though at the expense of some of their health. It's not a sure thing, and success is largely determined on the connection of the hen attempting the denial and their attachment to the target of the spell. Nobody knows the source of the power. Many believe it's tied to the sacred relic of the hen, the Black Flame Crucible, but there's no solid evidence of this. It only works in the Shires. A hen that has used the power many times in the past will lose it if he steps outside the nation, but immediately regain it on his return. Likewise, a hen from another land will gain the ability if they visit the Shires, even if they've never set foot in the land before. Glantrians would love to know how the ability works, and have dissected numerous hen to discover the secret, but to no avail. Which is the reason why when a Glantrian visits a town in the Shires, all hands go to weapons. The hen have a specific type of cleric known as a master, named after their long-disappeared allies. Masters are sworn to protect the Shires at all costs, and are known as some of the wisest hen in the land. Their powers normally don't work outside the Shires, but they can get permission from the churches of the High Heroes to adventure abroad, which removes the restriction. Their spells and abilities are there to protect Hen no matter where they are, making Masters incredibly perceptive and often like a parent to other adventurers. One aspect of Hen culture that surprises outsiders is their love of the ocean. They have a long tradition of sailing, as they came to the Shire by ships hundreds of years ago. Many Hen during their year Lauren will join a sailing vessel and see the world, though more will hoist the black flag and take up a life of piracy. Hen pirates are a common sight in the shadier ports. While other nations protest to how the Shires tend to shelter their pirates, the Hen consider the pirates part of their navy unofficially. As long as the pirates don't attack ships of the Shires or raise too much of a body count, the Shires look the other way, mainly because Hen piracy is a major source of income for the Shires themselves. Of the five shires inside the nation, High Shire is considered the most dangerous by far, home to the mouth of the Cruth River, the Darkwood Forest, and bordering the Cruth Mountains to the north, 
it is home to all sorts of monsters and humanoids. The area features numerous mining communities. Many of the mines laid were done by dwarves during the reign of King Loctal. These are the same mines that the orcs worked the Hin ancestors to death in, but they're rich in minerals and are badly needed by the nation. Old rivalries run deep in Highshire. Orcs are killed on sight, and it's not safe for dwarves to be found alone. East Shire is the best known of the Shires by outsiders, due to the fact that most caravans arrive from Karamikos into the town of Werskalot. The Shire is considered welcoming, but the Hin also try to keep any suspicious types from traveling further into the nation. It's heavily patrolled because of the proximity of the Black Eagle Barony, and any tall folk traveling alone or heavily armed are considered suspect. There are a good number of inns and taverns designed with tall folk in mind. Visitors can tell how welcome they will be received in the Shires by the size of the buildings they encounter when arriving. If there are no buildings larger than hen size, their stay had best be brief. Seashire is the wealthiest and most populous of all the Shires, home to the capital of Shireton. The major docks of the hen are located in Seashire, and the farmers bring down their harvest to sell to the merchants of Minorthat and Derrickin that frequent the ports there. Pirates are known to frequent the area, but will never target ships heading into port, as pirates are terrible for business. The area is known as a popular place for retired adventurers, both hen and otherwise, which makes raising trouble even more dangerous, as these retired adventurers are very powerful and really don't like being disturbed. Hartshire is considered the oldest of shires, though that claim is contested by the other shires for bragging rights. It's home to many of the mines the hens were forced to dig under the dwarven and orcish occupations, though those mines are long played out. This is the most peaceful and rural of the Shires. Tallfoot would discover that buildings their size are almost non-existent here. Few monsters travel south to the cities of the Shire, as the towns are built away from the mountains. Older hen love the quiet and peaceful farm life here, while younger hen hitting their yularen can't wait to get away from the boring rural life fast enough. South Shire is another Shire known for its tranquility and safety. It was once covered by thick forests, but those were cleared away during the various occupations. Now the land has been converted to rolling farmland, and the hen are mostly farmers or similar. Shire does have a thriving shipbuilding industry in its ports, and the ports are known for occasional pirate visits. Many of the smaller towns produce unique goods crafted by older hen looking to create novelty items as a hobby. Most of these items are shipped to ports or larger cities. They're rarely found in the smaller markets. Like Hartshire, hen on Yalarn are rarely found here. Patrolling these lands are several groups. First and foremost are the Krondar. They serve as city watch and investigators for the Shires. They number normally around 60, as they are hand-appointed by the sheriffs to keep the peace. While typically hen, certain tall folk who have served the sheriffs well have been given the honor of being named a Krondar. All the clans have a militia, which can be called up at a moment's notice. Each militia is rarely more than 50 hen. They don't like large formations, preferring hit-and-run tactics where they can. The fact that fully 60% of the nation has adventuring levels makes the hen militia much more dangerous than other nations. Again, kept small in number in accordance with typical hen tactics. Fangs rarely number more than 60, but are a standing force rather than a part-time militia. Strikers are the offensive aspect of the hen military, comprised entirely of high-level adventurers. Strikers will go abroad to go after threats in the Shire, which has caused numerous past diplomatic incidents. Hen are often of two minds. They're very polite to strangers, especially non-hen. They will make small talk, occasionally they'll talk shop, and they are pleasant conversationalists. However, they are distrustful to outsiders they don't know. Being invaded by foreigners who tower over you five different times causes a certain amount of distrust among the hen. Winning a hen over to your side is easy. Just prove yourself useful. While not as fanatical about hard work as the dwarves are, hen appreciate people who pull their own weight. They don't have the glaring distrust the dwarves are famous for. Numerous powerful adventurers have decided to settle down in the calm and tranquil shires, and after proving they mean no harm will be accepted as part of the clan. Older adventurers have an easier time winning over the hen than young and fresh adventurers. As the hen were once adventurers themselves, they love to swap stories about their adventuring days with newcomers that will listen. Interracial marriage between a hen and a tall folk, while rare, isn't unheard of, though if the couple wants to have children, they're going to need more than a little bit of help from a wizard or a cleric. Potions of growth are highly suggested. The Shires have few enemies and many friends. Their most apparent enemy is Baron Ludwig von Hendricks, who likes to raid across the border to steal from the hen. He keeps his involvement hidden, never personally getting involved. Though the hen suspect his involvement, they can't prove it to the Grand Duke. The hen are planning to either assassinate von Hendricks or somehow lure Grand Duke Stefan into the Black Eagle Barony so he can see his cousin's crimes for himself. Glantry is the other major pain in the side for the Five Shires, as the wizards want to learn the secrets of the hen, especially their denial ability. While the Shires aren't connected physically to Glantry, the wizards don't let that stop them from raiding hen villages for test subjects. The principalities keep a degree of plausible deniability from the offending wizards, but the shares are getting tired of the attacks. 
Hen strikers have ventured into Glantry to enact some measure of revenge and have become very good at killing wizards in the meantime. The situation is tense and there's no end in sight as long as Glantrians justify to themselves the need to kidnap test subjects. While the interior of the nation might be considered safe by most standards, the northern fringes of the Shire are anything but. Humanoids of all sorts reside in the north, along with various flying monsters like griffins and dragons. Vermin such as sturges or giant insects are a constant menace, though their population is kept down by constant patrols by the Krondar. Intelligent creatures like lycanthropes are uncommon but not unheard of. There is a large fey presence found in the rolling hills and forests throughout the Shires, as the high heroes are on friendly terms with the Shi court. Creatures endemic to the Shires include the Seargar, winged lions with a taste for hen meat. There's night gleet, which resemble winged eels, and rock fangs, resembling giant blubbery masses with a stinger tail. The hen suspect many of these creatures were created by Glantrians and deposited in the Shires to hunt the halflings, but that's just speculation. The Shires represent a safe haven to both recover and relax, as well as one of the most dangerous regions in the known world. If the players are looking to go on a hex crawl, the Kruth Mountains in Highshire will throw deadly creatures at them like they were candy. There's lost mines, ancient fortresses abandoned by the dwarves centuries ago, and of course, always Nithian cities. The adventurers will either be looking for lost treasures or tasked with finding some fell creature. If they need rest there, there's numerous high-quality inns or taverns in the Shires, along with several shops with more exotic items. They don't mind their magic items possibly being stolen. The pirates of the Shires often unload their cargoes for resale along their coastal cities. So why play a hen of the Shires? They're largely known for being peaceful, introverted, and pastoral. Of course, that's just the older ones. The younger ones are looking for adventure. It doesn't matter if they're seeking their thrills on the decks of a pirate ship, crawling through a dungeon, or hunting monsters for sport. As long as it's fun, they are there. Even the older hen are veterans of numerous campaigns. While they don't like to talk about the thrill of their younger days often, they don't forget its lessons. Many a legend has been forged by a Yalar. If the stories are true, the immortal Nobnar completed his entire quest for immortality as a teenager. It's high standards to live up to. Next up for the remasters is the Minerthad Guilds, the land that shows that having a large and diverse population of all the various fantasy races doesn't matter if everyone's a humorous workaholic. This was the nation that introduced us to the idea of money magic that sounded great in concept but was a nightmare to keep track of. Considered by some to be the second elven homeland, get ready for high seas adventures, corporate shenanigans, and some of the most uptight elves you will ever meet. But until then, remember, short people got no reason to live.